If you're watching this video, you may already know that with Odin Inspector, you can apply attributes to individual fields in order to validate those fields. But what if you wanted to validate all the strings in your entire project, or all the animation curves, or all the places a certain class or struct is used throughout an entire project? Or maybe you would like to use an attribute, but you can't because the code is read-only. Now, one solution is to put attributes on with some Odin attribute processor magic, but a simpler and more powerful way is to create a value validator which is one of our four powerful base validator types, and you can check out the description below for more information on the other types of validators. But let's jump right into an example and create our own custom value validator. The easiest way to create a new validator of any type is to simply right-click in your Unity project folders and select Odin Validator, then Create Validator. And finally, the type of validator you want to create, in our case, a value validator. When the pop-up window opens, choose the name of the validator along with the save location. If the naming of the validator is the name of an existing class followed by validator, Odin will do its best to parse the name and use correct types in the validator class. If the type doesn't exist or can't be found by Odin, you may need to make some manual adjustments. When registering the validator or rule, the type needs to match the class name and the base class's generic argument needs to be the type that is being validated. For this first example, we'll be validating a string. As a side note, there is an option to create a rule in addition to creating a validator. We'll address the differences between rules and validators in a future video, but essentially rules are serialized, can be configured in a validator window, and can be toggled on and off. Whereas validators cannot be toggled on and off or configured in the validator window. If you decide that your validator should be a rule or vice versa, it's just a matter of changing how it's registered, which is done above the class definition. We use register validator for validators and register validation rule for rules. For our first example, let's look at how we can add some proofreading to a project by validating strings. This could be used to check the capitalization of names or avoid certain words or phrases. So let's imagine that throughout a project, a particular name is frequently used and we want to make sure it has correct capitalization. A simple string validator can help check our entire project. For a basic validator, all the magic happens in the overridden validate function. To avoid an error, we first need to check if the string is null or empty and if it is, we'll return and exit the function. If the string is not null, we can check if the string contains our uncapitalized name. If it does, we can add an error message with result.addError with a message added as a string. And it's that easy. If we save our file and return to Unity, we can see the results of our new validator and fix the corresponding issues. Let's look at another example of a way to use a value validator. We could imagine a project that has a stat class that is used widely throughout the project by NPCs, enemies, and the player. This class might have an enum for the type of stat and an int or float for the value of that stat. If we assume that the type needs to be assigned and the value needs to be zero or greater than zero, then we have a perfect candidate for a value validator. The validator can be used to catch errors throughout the project scenes as well as in project prefabs. So just like before, we can create the validator by right-clicking in Unity's project folder, going to Odin Validator, Create Validator, and finally, Value Validator. For our example, we'll want to check that the stat type is not none. We can do this by accessing the stat type in any other public properties with this dot value. If the stat type is of the type none, then we want to display an error message to remind ourselves or the designer to set the value appropriately. Once again, we can display an error message with result.addError, adding the message as a string. Additionally, we can check if the value of the stat is less than or equal to zero. Once again, display a new message, in this case a warning, if the value is below zero. If we save our validator and head back to Unity, we can see the results. Every instance of the stats class in the project is checked, and if some are found to not have correct values, we can see messages in the inspectors, the validator window, or indication of the errors in the validator widget. With Odin's validators, you can also introduce fixes, draw gizmos in the scene, add right-click context options to issues, add metadata to issues, and even serialize configurable data in the validator. But since this is something that all of our validators have in common, we'll be creating additional videos to cover those topics.